What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on Fantasy Pros with a 10-team full PPR mock where we have the third pick overall. Should be pretty interesting. Our roster, one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and five bench spots. But that's pretty much it. So let's get into it. And a quick reminder, if you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And let us hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree with these picks? What are your thoughts on the teams along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. And lastly, we can officially finally say the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide is available for purchase. All you have to do is go to alldaypigskin.com and check it out there. It has everything you could want. Top 150 overall player ranking standard and PPR formats, individual player rankings, tiers, projections, along with player bios, uh, fantasy advice, and more details in the description. So make sure to check it out there. Available for a great price. But with all that being said, let's get back into it. The first two picks have been made. They are McCaffrey. They are Jonathan Taylor. I have zero problem with that. Even with McCaffrey being the first pick overall, it's full PPR. To me, he has the highest upside there. Here, I have the third pick overall. I would say it's pretty simple as well. You know, in fact, the first three, four, five picks in full PPR, I would argue are pretty simple. It's what you do afterwards, you know, in the second, third, fourth round. Uh, I would argue that that's where the draft really begins. Because, you know, the first four or five picks, you're going to be taking guys like Eckler, Najee Harris, Dalvin Cook, and then obviously the first two top tier one guys in Christian McCaffrey and Jonathan Taylor. But then what's going to happen in the second round, in the third round? That's where you're going to, you know, really be challenged, I would argue. But after our first pick of Eckler, kind of breaking this thing down, you see Mixon, Najee Harris, Dalvin Cook. I'd be selecting Harris and Dalvin Cook ahead of Mixon, like I mentioned before. Then Cooper Cup, DeAndre Swift, Derek Henry. Again, Derek Henry, this is full PPR. I'd have him a little bit lower. Uh, Mark Andrews, I don't like to see that that early on with the 10th pick overall and ahead of Travis Kelsey. I do think, uh, you know, in more uh, live drafts that we've done, ESPN, Yahoo, we've seen Kelsey go ahead of Andrews by a couple spots. So I, I think probably that's what we should expect come draft day. Then Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson, Aaron Jones, Jamar Chase. So no issues there in the second round. Travis Kelsey, Stephon Diggs, and Alvin Kamara. So we're in a spot here where we're back up. You know, some of the guys that we usually go after in the second round, guys like a, you know, Aaron Jones are off the board. Um, but I really like some of these wide receiver options, and I'm going to change it up here because I don't necessarily love the running backs that are left, Fournette, Chubb, Javante Williams. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go wide receiver here. I'm going to go C.D. Lamb, and then in the next round, kind of see what's left available and just take best player on the board. So we see I take C.D. Lamb, then the next couple of picks are just to recap Javante Williams, Nick Chubb, A.J. Brown, and Debo Samuel. So I'm okay with that here. I do want to go another running back. We got Eckler. We got Lamb. I feel good about that. Uh, there is Mike Evans still on the board, which is tempting, but I think the depth at wide receiver is going to be pretty good uh, come the next few rounds. So right now, I'm going to take Saquon Barkley. I have Barkley ranked higher than I do Leonard Fournette. You know, I, I think his upside for pure rushing yards are higher and, you know, the offensive line is improved, and I think he's still going to be involved in terms of being a pass catch and running game back as well. So I'm going to add him as our second um, overall running back and then build out our wide receiver core now here in this fourth round. But quickly, again, looking at these next couple of picks, you see Keenan Allen. I do really like that selection. Uh, but I already had Austin Eckler, so I didn't want to load up on too many chargers. Then London Fournette, Tyreek, Deontay Johnson, Mike Evans. Great value in Mike Evans. I was potentially thinking of picking him at the 303. Kyle Pitts, Cam Akers. I wouldn't be selecting Cam Akers that early on. You know, I still think there's going to be a running back by committee situation there. Um, but that's just my two cents. Then T. Higgins, James Conner, Michael Pittman, David Montgomery. I like the value on David Montgomery at the 404. I have him as a top 15 running back. 
Amari Cooper, Josh Allen, Brennan Cooks. All things considered, good value on Josh Allen where he went here in the middle of the fourth round. And again, we do have to remember this is a 10-team league, so it is important to get those positional advantages. So at some point, we're probably going to go with a quarterback here, but that's too early still. Now what we can do here is, you know, take a look at some of these uh, wide receivers that we have on the board, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore, uh, DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin. I really like Terry McLaurin as a potential guy to break out with Carson Wentz. Uh, we could go with a tight end as well. George Kittle still on the board. Darren Waller still on the board. Um, and I think that's probably what I'm going to do. I, I, I'm going to go wide receiver here, and then I'm going to go with a a uh, tight end to get, you know, that positional advantage. In fact, I'm probably going to go with a tight end first in case, in case there's a tight end run. So, you know, kind of just uh, getting ahead of that. And the guy that I'm going to go with here in full PPR, I actually do have um, Darren Waller a little bit ahead of uh, George Kittle. You know, less injury concerns, things like that. And if Trey Lance is the quarterback long term, and for the majority of the season, again, that hasn't been fully committed to by the 49ers. I do think that lessens the passing upside for George Kittle a little bit. So I will go with Darren Waller. Yes, Devontae Adams is still there. But, um, you know, it's a situation where I think that uh, it's he's going to be the number two option. Hunter Renfro is the guy that's really going to get hurt. Um, so then we see Brees Hall, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore. Terry McLaurin does go off the board. Oh, well, I wanted to make sure we get that positional advantage at tight end. And we could also go like, you know, a running back here again, and maybe a guy like Ezekiel Elliott, and then go with a wide receiver. Um, but let's, let's kind of look at the board. And I'm looking at the guys. I'm hoping Kyler Murray will be available for us in the next round. I think there's a good chance of that. We've already got our tight end. So the question is, do you want to go running back here with an Ezekiel Elliott and Travis Etienne, or do you want to go with an Allen Robinson uh, as our second wide receiver? And, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think that there's a chance that Allen Robinson might be available um, in the next round if we get very, very lucky. So here I'm just going to get more depth. I'm going to go with um, Ezekiel Elliott and get our third running back already taken care of. So let's see how this plays out. Let's see if we get lucky. There's a little bit of a run on quarterbacks, um, but I, I would say that we got pretty lucky here. So uh, yeah, we did. Because after our selection of Ezekiel Elliott, you see George Kittle, DK Metcalf, Patrick Mahomes. There goes our second quarterback, Gibson, Darnell Mooney, Michael Thomas, Cortland Sutton. I wouldn't be drafting Mooney this high up. Again, Allen Robinson is still there for folks. Marquise Brown is the suggestion shows. In the sixth round, Josh Jacobs, Hunter Renfro, Herbert, Lamar Jackson. Uh, then you see Godwin, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jerry Judy. With Amon Ra, I think he's going to kind of go down big time. And in terms of stats this year compared to last year, so um, I'm out on him. Now, the question here is, do these guys that are drafting after us have quarterbacks? They do not. So I do think we have to go quarterback because Kyler Murray is the next best available guy. And I wouldn't be shocked if there is... Uh, a quarterback run here, a small one, and I want to get that positional advantage. I think Kyler Murray is a guy that is um, in that tier one quarterback list. And here we actually plan this just right because you see TJ Hawkinson next, then Joe Burrow, uh, then DeAndre Hopkins, and then Jalen Hurts. So um, yeah, if we had waited on Kyler Murray instead of gone Allen Robinson first, we would not have had a chance to get that tier one quarterback here. I'm going Allen Robinson all day, every day. Um, let's quickly bring up our roster so you guys can be reminded of what we have here. Now, I will say there are a couple names that were also tempting, but I did want to get that second wide receiver. So we have Kyler Murray, we have Eckler, we have Saquon Barkley, CeeDee Lamb, Allen Robinson, Darren Waller, and Ezekiel Elliott. So we do have Lamb, we do have Ezekiel Elliott, two guys from the Dallas Cowboys. Um, you could argue that we should have gone with Travis Etienne over Ezekiel Elliott. I definitely understand that. So not to be loading up too much 
from the Dallas Cowboys. Probably the one thing that uh, we could have improved on here. Uh, I will also bring up Travis Etienne. Where did he go? He went in the eighth round. That's not realistic. That's tremendous value. Don't get me wrong, but it's not realistic. He will be going a lot earlier. I would imagine in the fifth, sixth round at the latest, um, even with this being a 10-team league. Uh, otherwise, in the seventh and eighth round, Russell Wilson, Marquise Brown. So a lot of those wide receivers that we really liked are off the board. J.K. Dobbins, Mike Williams, Rashad Bateman, good value on Dobbins there, even if this is a full PPR league. Brady, Aaron Rodgers, A.J. Dillon, Etienne, uh, Thielen, Juju, Elijah Mitchell, Elijah Moore, and then Devin Singletary. So looking back at our cheat sheet, we have got our starting roster completely taken care of, which I love. Um, now looking at options here at wide receiver looking at options at running back we can go miles sanders you know to potentially get even more depth at the running back position i would definitely argue as far as the running backs that are available he is the best one still left on the board as far as wide receivers we can take a uh, you know chance on the gabriel davis but full ppr uh, a lot of people are saying you know gabe davis is going to break out etc cetera, etc cetera. but you know in my opinion uh, the reception count for Gabriel Davis isn't exactly all that high if you look at it last year. Um, and I don't think it's just going to spike all of a sudden by like 40, 50 receptions. So I'm going to go with Miles Sanders, get some depth there, uh, and then see what happens here in the next couple of selections. Devonta Smith, Tyler Lockett, Goddard, and then Sky Moore. So now we can go with Gabriel Davis uh, a couple of selections afterwards. We got Miles Sanders. I like the value there. Um, Alan Lazard, I wonder if he's going to be left available for us um, in the next round. That's my main thing. I actually have him a, you know, a decent amount higher than uh, Gabriel Davis, but let's see if it pays off. I'll take Davis here because I know he won't be available in the next round, just the way these rankings are, are made on Fantasy Pros. Um, and then uh, we'll see if Alan Lazard falls to us. If not, uh, oh, well, that's our own fault. So looking at it, we do get lucky. And let's add him immediately to our um, cheat sheet here and to our list of guys that we're going to target. So we're going to Alan Lazard. Uh, I like that pick for us there. Let's see if there's any running backs here. Now that's that stand out. And we've pretty much got two final picks to make. And then uh, that'll be it, you know, kind of looking at this board we can go with a handcuff in Isaiah Spiller to our Austin Eckler um, as far as tight ends we've got that taken care of um, so I don't have to worry about that we can go best player available now with this pick and then with our uh, last pick as well so I'm going to go with Isaiah Spiller just to get our handcuff taken care of and then I'm going to make one last selection so the Spiller pick is to handcuff Austin Eckler. Again, I would probably be doing this later on, but since this is a, you know, 10-team um, league, I want to take care of this now, and we're only going for another round. So that was the logic there. And then our final pick, well, let's look at the wide receiver board. Let's look at um, kind of the cheat sheet. And as far as we could go, another quarterback in Matthew Stafford, to get some really nice depth there in, in case a, a Kyler Murray struggles. We could go wide receiver, but we've already got four wide receivers, so I, I'm not necessarily too in trouble there. I'm probably just going to go Matthew Stafford here uh, and just get tremendous uh, depth at quarterback. We have already got Kyler Murray, then we're going to get Matthew Stafford, so I feel very good about that. Both guys, to me, are top 10 guys. And now let's just see what our draft grade is because I think we did a pretty good job. We get a C plus. I disagree with that. I think our grade should be higher. I think we're looking at at least a B grade. But again, hey, let me know your thoughts. I think Kyler Murray, a tier one quarterback. Eckler, a top three guy. Barkley, I think returns to being a top 10 running back. Lamb, Allen Robinson. Um, I know, you know, Fantasy Pros isn't as big of a fan of Allen Robinson as I am, but I think he's going to come back in a major way this year. Then we got Matthew Stafford. If something happens to Kyler Murray, we can pair him up with Allen Robinson as well. We've got Darren Waller, that positional advantage, which is so important in these 10-team leagues where a lot of these squads are going to be top-heavy. But again, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, and most importantly, make sure to check out the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide at alldaypigskin.com, now available for purchase. Everything you can want, details in the description. But with that being said, we'll see you guys in future videos.